Looks I like know there's more. There's one right there. Oh! Boom! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, good morning everybody. Welcome to the vlog from the incubator. I hope the start of your day is absolutely amazing. Look at this. We have a bunch of really beautiful snakes hatching. A whole stack of snakes out of their eggs. It's a great way to start the morning. All right, so what do you say we just take a look and see what hatched? Let's get started with this first clutch. And this is actually a pretty exciting clutch for me because this is kind of the start of something I think is going to be really cool. And what we have here is a mahogany head pied and a mahogany spider head pied. Now the mahogany gene is a darker gene. As you can see here, it makes things a little darker. It's co-dominant. But what I really like is the fact that the super version is basically a solid black or really, really dark brown snake. And I think that getting them into pied is going to be pretty amazing because what they call a sumo, which is the super mahogany pied, could be almost like an Oreo pied. Now there are panda pies now, but there's some genetic issues with them. A lot of deformity, some other issues like like that and some are fine there's not all panda pies are a problem but i think the mahogany or the super mahogany suma might be the key to having a really cool black and white pie that happens to be really great not to mention most of the panda pies which are the super cinnamons or super black pastels are very high white because for whatever reason cinnamon and black pastel pies are typically like 80 or 90 percent maybe the suma pies can be 40 percent 50 percent i think a black and white pie that's 50 50 is going to be one of the coolest snakes I've ever seen. Moving on to the next clutch, there's some calico animals in here. And actually this one here is just a pinstripe yellow belly. But this one, as you can see with these really beautiful sides and that pink in it, that is a calico gene. Now what happens is a calico will hatch out with kind of pink with a little bit of white in it. And as it gets a little bit older, the pink turns white. So these guys are absolutely beautiful. I love the calico gene and I haven't worked with them nearly as much as I probably should. So maybe this will kind of reinvigorate myself and I can work with more of them because some of them are really gorgeous. Next up would be a GHI that I bred to a lesser in hopes to produce some GHI lessers. And of course this animal right here is a GHI. You can see how it's really busy pattern and it's much darker than say a normal ball python. And this of course is a lesser ball python here. Now mixed together the lesser and the GHI make amazing combinations. Unfortunately in this clutch I miss my odds. I did produce some GHIs and I did produce some lessers but no lesser GHIs but hey I'm still happy with the clutch. The next animals I want to share with you guys are actually Woma Lesser Pinstripe. Now the lesser is a co-dominant mutation but the pinstripe and the Woma are actually an incomplete dominant which basically just means that there's not a super version but in reality maybe the Woma is a super version but a lethal super version because some people have produced white snakes from Woma to Woma but they've never lived so I'm not really sure but I still kind of consider them an incomplete dominant in the sense that they don't have a viable super. So we, I don't know. What are, it's all semantics, right? Regardless, these are some beautiful animals. And the last clutch that came out of the incubator is this clutch right here. Take a look at those rippers. Of course, this is a banana to a pinstripe. But oh my gosh, I mean, all these little banana pinstripes, they all just look so beautiful. Now, the banana animals are certainly one of the most incredible mutations when it comes to ball pythons. Of course, they are a co-dominant mutation. But just take a look at how incredible they are. I mean, those things are absolutely crazy. And you know what's crazy about the bananas and coral glows is, believe it or not, when they first came out, they were selling for $60,000. That's right, people were paying sixty grand for a co-dominant ball python, which was really amazing. Now they're really much cheaper, under a couple hundred dollars typically. But these guys are really cool. Of course, the banana pinstripes are a little bit more expensive just because of the double mutation, but they are absolutely incredible. And this is what a banana looks like without another mutation in it. They come out looking just like this. And I remember when the very first ones were produced, in particular the coral glows that kept maturely out at Nerd Produce, I thought that there was no way that this was a co-dominant mutation that you could take this animal and breed it to a normal ball python and right out of the rip you would get animals that look like this because we had never seen anything like it other than recessive mutations which again take an extra generation. So bananas and coral glows were real game changers. Oh my god guys, I am just in love with all these baby snakes. I mean, oh my gosh, every day is a great day when you can wake up and hatch out some really cool animals. So anyway, 
anyways, we're gonna have to set these guys up, get them feeding, and then eventually they'll get on the website. That is the ones that we don't decide to keep. All right, guys, so I am super excited because Kelsey just came to me and told me that we have some more rainbow boas. Yes! All right, <laughs> all right, let's see what we got here. Oh, uh-oh, oh, oh, oh that doesn't look like there's some, some stillborns over here. That's terrible. Look at one, two, three stillborns, four stillborns. Ah, oh, that's terrible. Looks like there's some live ones, so it's not all lost. But see, we got, ooh, look at these guys are feisty little dudes. All right, there's one good one here, two good ones. There's three. Oh, three good ones, four, ooh, five. Oh, this mama's gonna bite us. Watch out, mama. Six. Ooh, that what? Whoa, look at that. Is that That's neat? a crazy it's pattern. Kind of neat, huh? Mm -hmm. Wow, look at that. That is crazy. It's like a reduced pattern on the back. That is really interesting. Look at how different this one is compared to the other ones. Look at how there's like no pattern at all compared to these. That's a really cool looking snake. How many were at? Six? Yes. Six. Seven. Oh, is that it? It looks I like know there's more. There's one right there. Whoa! Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Gotta be careful. Whoa! There's eight. <laughs> eight. And Mama is not happy. Mm -mm, no way. Eight. It's okay, Mom. It's okay. There's nine. There's nine. Oh, there's another one here. There's Whoa. ten. Eleven. Eleven. Okay, so there's more than we thought. Eleven. It looks like that's it. Oh, nope. There's twelve. Twelve. Okay, 12. Looks like that might be it. Woo! And Mama's not happy at all. Okay, so uh -oh. it looks like. Where are you going, little monkey? <laughs> oh gosh, get out of here. Okay, so we got 12 good babies, and unfortunately, we had four little stillborns. And again, stillborns just happen. I, you know, it could be a whole host of reasons, but all in all, that's still not bad to have 12 really good babies. One really exceptional baby that I think is going to be really cool. I can't wait to kind of, probably going to keep that one. And then, uh, then we had a few stillborns, but hey, Mama looks healthy and happy. Look at it, almost looks like she didn't even lay. Look at how good she looks. So, uh, we'll get these guys set up and uh, I'll keep you updated on how awesome that one snake looks. That was pretty cool, huh, Kelsey? Absolutely. So, hey, you know what? I'll take it. 12 good babies is still good. It's not 29 like the last litter, but hey, it's still an awesome litter. Okay, so Lori is back at work, but as you can see, she can't walk. <laughs> so I have to, everywhere she goes, I have to push her around. <laughs> and I'm gonna be honest with you, I have a feeling she's just faking it because she wants to get a free ride. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this is how important Lori is, is that I couldn't even let her, she wanted to stay home and I said, no, you're coming to work, whether you want. To. That's my life. That is not true either. <laughs> I was actually encouraging her to stay home. I didn't want her to have to come in today, but I was glad she did because I think it's awesome that she's here. How are you doing? Um, I'm doing okay. I was better earlier. I think I'm coming to uh, the end of what I can endure for a day. <laughs> but she's got, she leaves in like, what, three days or four days? She leaves in four days for Florida for Disney, so her leg has got to get better before then. The good news is is that she was working all day at putting new animals up on the website because I, we have so many animals that have hatched and are eating and doing well, and we have not put them up on the website yet. So uh, she came in and she sat in her chair and she, <laughs> <laughs> she did her website. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> so anyone that looks at the website and says, oh, they got new stuff up, you know that Lori really That's sacrificed for, <laughs> for this one. So anyways, wish Lori the best, and she's going to go home now. Okay, so about a week ago, Lori showed you a little tiny baby ball python, and it was actually a twin, and uh, the other one didn't make it, so this is the only survivor of the twin. But a normal ball python is gonna weigh about 50 to 70 grams as a baby. This one only weighs about 20 grams. Now, what probably happened is it probably didn't get enough yolk in it when it hatched out because it just is so small and depleted. Now, we offered it food yesterday, and typically I would offer another week worth of food before I would assist feed. But this one just looks so frail. I think that if I wait another week, it may be a problem. I really want to get a meal in it. So I think I'm going to go ahead and assist feed a little tiny meal to it. And I've showed you guys how to assist feed before, but I figured it's a great opportunity to show you again. And basically what I'm going to do is, again, I just support its body really well. 
and I just very gently try to get it behind its head. Again, I'm not trying to, to force it, hurt it, do anything. And I'm gonna take the pinky, and I'm just gonna use that to kind of slightly pry open the mouth here. And again, I'm super gentle with this because I don't want to hurt the animal in any way. And hey, listen, they're going to resist a bunch in the beginning, uh, but we'll get it, trust me. And then eventually it wants to open its mouth, and I'm going to just just very gently push just a little bit. Again, I've talked to you guys before about how I don't really like force feeding snakes, but I assist feed them. And what I want to do is just get that kind of a little bit down its gullet, just a little tiny bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dangle it like this for a minute. See, now it's holding on to it. Then I just gently put it down. And then I just leave it alone. I walk away from it and hopefully it's gonna eat. So there you have it. I mean, basically that's how you assist feed a snake. And again, this animal is gonna really do well uh, getting that bunch of protein in it and nutrition in it so that it can hopefully eat within the next week or two. Uh, worst case scenario, I might have to do this two or three weeks in a row to kind of beef it up a little bit. I have no doubt it's going to live. So uh, I, uh, I always love when an animal is cooperative. It was the first time took it, no problem, was happy to eat. So that was a complete success. All right, so guys, can we have a few seconds of real time talk here? This just got real. You know, I haven't really been updating you nearly as much as I probably should with my new company, Reptile Prime. Uh, again, you guys have seen the new bag. Bags. They're ready. They're available. They have the little zipper resealer on them So that way if you don't use an entire bag, you can reseal it. We're gonna have smaller sizes of this We're also gonna have a finer product that we're really excited about that's gonna be out really soon But anyways, I, I want to kind of address a couple things really kind of what I consider the elephant in the room Right, and that is basically the fact that you know my face is on this bag and you know Sometimes people might think to themselves. Well, that's kind of an egotistical thing and and listen Number one, we talked a lot about this, and, and me personally, I am like beyond humble in so many ways. I mean, I never think of myself as anything but very lucky to work with the animals and just be able to do the things that I do in life. So there's never a time where I'm like, oh, I'm a big shot, or I should be on the cover of something, or anything like that. As a matter of fact, it's kind of the opposite of it. Seeing my face on something, or on a bag, or on a product, is a little bit uncomfortable for me, to be totally honest with you. It's like, it's embarrassing. But at the same time, let me tell you why we did this and what our thinking is on this. Is that, you know, we wanted to have a signature brand. You know, somewhere where when someone walked into a pet shop, they were like, I see this person and it looks like this person has a lot of experience. And, and, you know, whether you like it or not, I do have a lot of experience, almost 30 years of keeping reptiles professionally. So uh, that doesn't mean that I can't learn more because I certainly can. There's a lot of things that I learn every single day and I learn from you guys as well. So I'm no better than anybody. But that being said, you know, when someone walks into a pet shop, seeing a signature brand might give them the opportunity to say, I want to buy that product because that person obviously knows what they're doing. But it is a little weird. So rather than just ignore it, why don't we embrace the weirdness? Okay. And I'm going to do a a couple things. Number one, go ahead and comment down below and I'm going to pick a handful of people and I'm going to send you guys a free bag of Reptile Prime. As a matter of fact, you can go to reptileprime.com. You can buy some if you'd like or whatever the case may be. But anyways, I am going to go ahead and give a few away. But but the other thing I want to do is I want to kind of challenge you guys. You can also start following us on Facebook and Instagram at Reptile Prime. Uh, and I want to do something. I, again, I'm going to embrace the kind of weirdness here. Uh, I want you guys to buy a bag bag of this or if I give it to you whatever the case may be go ahead and take a sharpie and do your best little uh you know whatever mark my face up give me a little goatee give me a hat maybe maybe I got a little hat up here do whatever the case you may be I would love to see what you guys could do with this and go ahead and tag reptile prime on Instagram or share it on Facebook and we'll go ahead and pick some really good creative things that you guys do to my face on the reptile prime bag and for those of you guys that don't know what this is. This is a coconut husk, but the only patented process for removing dust. So this is basically 99% dust free. Can't say it's 100% because you can never get 100%, but it's really dust free. And, and we think it's really good. And that doesn't mean anything bad about the other companies that do coconut husk. I am not here to bash other companies. I'm just here to try to provide a really good product for you guys. And hopefully you'll like it. So anyways, let's go ahead and have a little bit of fun at my expense, okay? Because I'm not beyond a little self-deprecation. As a matter of fact, I make fun of myself all the time, and so does everyone else for that matter. And I think
think it's completely fine. I love this product, I love this company, I believe in this product, and I hope that you guys will support us on it. And in the meantime, make me look as foolish as you possibly want. And go ahead and tag us in it, and we'll share the funniest ones on our Instagram and Facebook pages, and we'll pick some winners and ship you some of this product to try. And in the meantime, go ahead and comment down below, and I'll give a handful of these bags away. Oh, and as I'm wrapping this kind of real-time segment up, let me know down and below in the comments if it bothers you that I'm promoting this product. I want to take you guys along on this entire process of developing not only this product, but many other products that we're gonna do, I wanna share. We've sent out test samples to you guys and you guys have really given us some amazing feedback. So I wanna know, is it okay that I'm sharing this experience with you guys or you guys think that I'm a sellout for doing it? I don't want you guys to think that. I wanna really know what you guys think because you guys are awesome. So anyways, uh, let's have some fun. All right guys, so I'm gonna end the vlog here, but I wanted to say something. You know, don't ever let anyone hold you back. Believe in the things that you believe in and keep pushing forward. You can do anything if you believe in yourself and you just work hard. Don't let negativity drag you down. Rise above it. You know, there's always gonna be people that try to tear your dreams away from you because they're sad in their own life and they want you to be sad. Don't allow them to do that. Just continue to push forward and follow your dreams and passions because that's what life is all about. I cannot thank you guys enough for all your support and watching and all the things you guys do for me. You guys mean the absolute world to me. Thank you so much. Can you do me a favor? Can you smash that like button and hit the notification bell? Turn those post notifications on, please, for me. Make sure to be kind to somebody today. And I promise I'm gonna see you guys tomorrow.